everybody, Mrs. Hamilton here. Today we're going to talk about DNA and RNA structure. Super simple note, so let's get cracking. Okay, so what does DNA stand for? It stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. So deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, DNA is a very long stringy molecule that holds the blueprint, or basically um, all the information for the cell's activities. It basically it codes the traits, Okay, so things that we can do, or characteristics, as in how we look. And its main function really is to code for proteins. Okay, so this is the big thing, proteins. Um, so DNA is made up of repeating monomers, and these monomers are called nucleotides. So nucleotides, okay, which comprise of a pentose, which means it's got five uh, carbons, so pentose, sugar, in this case, it's deoxyribose, okay, which is um, different in, than RNA, which is just ribose, and we'll talk about that momentarily. It also has a phosphate backbone too, so a phosphate backbone. And finally, it has a nitrogenous base, okay, as you can see in the diagram here. So let's just move this over a tad. And let's draw the diagram. So basically, we have a, a pentose sugar, which is in the shape of a pentagon. So we have an oxygen. We have one, two, three, four carbons. Then we have, from this carbon, we have another carbon. Okay, so let's label these one, two, three, four, five. And then from this carbon at the top, we have our phosphate group. Okay, and we're just going to put that as a P in a box. And then from the number one carbon, this is where we have our nitro nitrogenous base. And we would draw that as a box, just like so. Okay, I would point out, if it was me, that here this carbon has just an H, okay? Because it is deoxy. Okay, so let's move on a little bit. So that's our basic diagram for how to draw um, a nucleotide. Okay, so let's move up and let's move on. Okay, so here is our DNA. For now the five prime, three prime, what that means is that the carbon that is at the top is the five carbon. So we say it's five prime, three prime, because the anti-parallel strand runs three prime with the three carbon at the top, five prime. Okay, so DNA is a double helix, as we know, double helix. And it has a parallel strand running in the five prime, three prime, and it has an anti-parallel strand running in the three prime, five prime. Okay, so it's running in the um, three prime, five prime direction. Now DNA has four different nitrogenous bases, and you remember these, A, T, G, C. However, um, two of them are one ring pyrimidines. Okay, so they have one ring in them. And these are cytosine and thymine. And this makes these two a little bit smaller. The other two, guanine and adenine, they have two rings, so they're a slightly bit larger, as you can see here. So we have guanine and we have adenine. Adenine. And they're a little bit larger because they're two ring purines. The secret of the DNA code lies in the base sequence, okay? So it lies in the nitrogenous base sequence. Can I fit that in? Yes, I can. Okay, and finally, the nitrogenous bears are held together by what kind of bonds? Hydrogen bonds, of course, because if you don't know anything or need to guess, you'll always say hydrogen bonds. The reason they're held together in hydrogen bonds is because we want to be able to break them apart when we need to do replication or if we need to do transcription, which we'll talk about later. But basically, they're held together so they can zip together and zip unzip apart. And that means we need to have hydrogen bonds. Okay, um, my main man, Shargath, 
he came up with the uh, complementary base pairing. Basically, he said that adenine, if there is an X amount of adenine, there will be exactly the same X amount of thymine. And if there is Y amount of cytosine, then there'll always be Y amount of guanine. And this is called complementary base pairing. A always goes with T, C always goes with G. And that was really important. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a highlighter and highlight a couple of things for you. We have our complementary base pairing here. Now this complementary base pairing is happens in every single living thing, whether that be an ant, an octopus, a human, a plant, a rabbit, anything that is living has the same base pairs. Basically, DNA is the same for every living thing. So we have the same DNA as an ant. Okay. So let's look at RNA. RNA is very similar, okay? Nothing really much different, apart from the fact that it stands, the RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. And RNA is a straight single strand. So DNA was double, okay? This case, it is a single strand, but still a pentose sugar, so still a five carbon sugar, okay? Which in this case is ribose and it still has a phosphate backbone. So phosphate backbone and a nitrogenous base. Okay, so it's very similar. The only difference um, is at this point is the ribose sugar. However, we know, and you should know by now, that the, the um, bases are a little different in RNA. So let me just move this up a tad for you. Okay, then we've got everything there. Excellent. So the nitrogenous bases that make up RNA are one ring pyrimidines, which are cytosine. However, RNA does not have thymine. It has uracil. And that's a big, big difference. Okay, if you ever see uracil, you know immediately the molecule is going to be RNA. However, it does have the same two purines. It still has guanine. And it still has adenine. Okay, now I'm going to just draw a quick drawing of our um, ribose sugar here. Okay, so we have oxygen that we had before, carbon, 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 carbon up here. And I'm going to draw our little nucleotide just to show you. Here's our P. Um, we have of our first carbon, I am going to put the base this time. I am going to put a U, just so you see that there. I'm going to label one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I am, oops, and I'm going to show you that here though, we have OH. Okay, this is ribose. Deoxyribose has deoxy, no oxygen there, ribose does. Okay, so last but not least, it says, as you can see, the RNA base, um, uracil, is in place of thymine, which is only found in DNA. Okay, so the finally, all of this was garnered over lots of years by some famous scientists who you should learn about, um, there is another video on that. And they are Avery, Shargath, my main man, Wilkins, Franklin, who in all of this was the victim, and finally, Watson and Crick. It's a super interesting story, lots of intrigue and, and theft and all sorts of stuff. And IB really want you to know it. Okay, I hope that was interesting. And I hope it helped. It's another day of sun.